it's Saturday the 27th of October 2012. Welcome to today's United Kingdom talk, the one before Halloween. <laughs> We're going to get you. <laughs> yes, gang. Oh, it's that wonderful little echo thing I've got on here. Shall I do it again? Echo. Oh, hang on. Echo. You haven't got one. Oh, here, go. here she comes. Katie. Come in then, darling. I think the cat wants to make an appearance today. Katie. You coming in? Katie. Come on, girl. I can see, <laughs> I can see a towel disappear around the corner. Katie. Why do they do that? They sit there and meow at the door. Here she come. Oh, there you are. Hello, darling. You coming up? Come on. You coming up? Come on, Daddy's lap. Come on. Come on, darling. I don't know what you want. You keep standing there meowing at me. Do you want cuddles? What do you want? Come up on my lap, then. Do you want to say hello? Because you haven't said hello to people for ages, have you? Now she's gone under the chair. Oh, God. Come on. Gosh. What's wrong, darling? Come on. Come up. Hey. You want to come up? Here we are. Oh, we go. Mwah! Here she is, Katie Kins. Hello, darling. All right, what's all the meowing for today, eh? Uh, what's all your meowing for, love? Uh, I'll give you some food downstairs, so it can't be you hungry. I don't know what you want. Mm? Can you hear her? Listen. She purring. Can you hear that? She's a bit quiet today, a bit quiet. Pur Sometimes it's loud purring. Today, it's quiet purring. Now there's no parent, she's just sitting there. There we are. I've noticed actually she's got some um where her fur is. If you stroke her and push down oh she's come here. Oh, purring now, listen. Can you hear that? Mm -hmm. Um she's got some Oh, she's off again. Make up your mind, dear. I don't know what you want. Oh, I won't lock her out, I'll just push the door to. Um, she's got some, like, uh, on, uh, at the bottom of the fur, some sort of scabs. And I'm not quite sure what that is. I've looked it up on the internet, um, cat scabs or something like that. I can't remember what I put in there. And uh, apparently it can be a thousand and one different things. And you can smell a, a, a spell, uh, not spell. You can spend a small fortune trying to find out what they are with not necessarily an answer at the end of it. I, I, I did have a look at some people's stories and what have you. Um, so they don't really seem to bother her. Uh, I do notice that she, she sometimes she come, you know, puts her head back and starts pulling away at bits of fur. And I generally go there and then I can feel the scab and gently with my nail, I will like scratch it off and put it in the bin. Well, I've, I tell a slight lie there. What tends to happen is that it, 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 it's noticeable when she's sitting on my lap and I'm stroking her and then you feel one. And I simply get my, get my nail and gra gently push it across her and then it comes loose and then you just pull the bit of fur off and throw it on the floor. Which she doesn't seem to mind at all, actually. She doesn't sort of jump up when you start doing that. In fact, I think she actually likes it. I think she knows that I'm doing her a bit of a favour. So I don't know if you've ever had a, a cat with, with, with scabs on her back or some sort of skin condition. I'm not sure what it was. I, d I don't think it was always there. It's, it's a recent thing. Actually, come to think of it, since, since she had to go on the thyroid tablets. Now, that's a point. Let me write that down and I'll have a look later. Thyroid cat tablets skin scabs oh well anyway you, you you kind of pull them off and um and uh, uh, uh throw them in the bin of course uh but they they do seem to be never ending you know it's not like there's one or two and then it's gone and so i'm not quite sure what's causing that i'll have a look at thyroid cat tablets and let you know um if i find anything next week or right? uh those of you watching the show via youtube yes you can as well as listen to this watch it as well on youtube uh you will note it or indeed on itunes don't forget you can download this show on itunes either the video version or the audio only version available on itunes all free of charge just hit subscribe come on of course it's free of charge who's gonna play pay for this load of old rubbish 
Eh? No one's going to pay for this load of other rubbish. That's why it's... I can't give it away, to be honest. I can't give this show away, dear. And that's why it's free. <laughs> okay, uh, those of you watching the show... Uh, YouTube username is Chris Reardon UK, all right? YouTube.com, I think, forward slash Chris Reardon UK. You can find me there. Or just type in United Kingdom Talk in iTunes and choose either the video or the audio version or there. Also on Daily Motion, those of you, there's not many people watch on there. Anyway, those of you watching the show will notice I've had my hair cut. I like to keep it nice and short at all times. It hides the bit of baldness that has, um, Appeared in the middle for for uh, uh, for a couple of years now, uh, which which my younger nephew, <coughs> um, Jimmy, the older one doesn't do it. The older the younger nephew Jimmy, who's fifteen, and of course my niece, newly made mother Tracy, who's now a mother. She's twenty five, and she's mother to little George. Bless his heart. Actually, I've got a, a couple of pictures uh, uh, to show you a little bit later on in the show. Okay, of um of uh, great nephew George and great niece Evie. Evie is the daughter of my nephew Gary and his wife Stacy, and George is my great nephew. He is the son of my niece Tracy and her husband Ben, and it's Tracy and my little nephew Jimmy, uh, who like to always point out uh, that they can see the light shining at the top of my head. So thank you very much. The reason I keep it short is to try and sort of cover up that bit. It does make it less noticeable. So I have a, a number half around the back and sides and a number one on top. That's what I do. And I've been trying different hairdressers. Now, I used to go to this place in London when my mate Ronnie lived in London, used to go there, and then he used to go around his house, have a little bit of a sleep, and then go to work from there. Well, of course, he doesn't live there anymore. And it, 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 it was a brilliant hairdresser's. I think there were like four or five Turkish boys and men in there uh, doing haircutting. Really good job. They were very polite, very pleasant. They weren't over expensive. Um, I'm just trying to think of the name of the road now. Was it New, New something road, cross road? Oh, I can't remember now. Can't remember the name of the road, but it was somewhere near the old street roundabout in sort of East London way. And they did a really good job. Well, I'm miles away from there now, and Ronnie is now living just down the road from me. So it's a bit pointless going all that way. It's, it's like, it would be like, you know, leave my house at 10 o'clock in the morning, get to the hairdressers at 12, have me hair cut, leave there about half past 12, quarter to one. Wouldn't be back here till three o'clock. I mean, it's ridiculous. A five hour trip to go and have your hair cut. So I've been trying various different hairdressers around here. And uh, the the one I went to Saturday has it. She's done a good job, but she was a bit rough with that, you know, the that thing. Cool, dear, she was a bit rough. In fact, afterwards, when I got home, all, all the front of my head was like um, red, where she was really pushing hard with this thing. Not nice. Not nice. She was nice. Yeah, she, uh, she was very down to earth and uh, spoke to me, you know. Not your usual old crap that these bloody young female hairdressers start rabbiting away in your ear, don't they? Have you got a girlfriend? Where you... And it's always the same conversation in a hairdresser's. Have you noticed that? Have you got a girlfriend? When you're going on holiday, what do you do? And all this, uh, what car you got? You know, you feel like they're sizing you up for a sort of, you know, boyfriend type thing or whatever. And I think, oh, for Christ's sake, shut up, woman, and get on with it. Well, she wasn't like that. She was quite down to earth. And her conversation was kind of, dare I say, led by me. She wasn't kept it going on about things. Um, so, But she didn't over talk. What I like about the... the t In fact, men, when you get your hair cut by men, unless they're gay, you know, and when you get... Uh, by, by, shall we say real men, OK? Like the Turkish boys. I mean, they are very gorgeous, but, that you know, they're real men, straight lads, work in this hairdressers. Uh, or another one in Bracknell I've tried. When they cut your hair, they ask you what you want, and then they just bloody well get on with it. You know, none of this old crap. Chat, 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 chat. I mean, if I wanted to w listen to women talking incessantly crap, then I'd watch Loose Women on ITV, wouldn't I? Oh, have you ever watched that? Oh, chat, 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 chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't bear it. Anyway, so, um, so I don't, I don't think I'm going to go back to her. She was very rough. Another rough one, a few weeks before that, I went to a, a hairdresser near, um, uh, where I go to the uh, uh, swimming pool in Wokingham. 
lovely little place on the corner and he's got different hairdressers in there there's one young lad covered in tattoos i think he runs the tattoo parlor as well i've seen him doing it he hasn't done me yet but he seems to sit on the corner around the corner very different different people seem to change uh, last uh, i went once to a girl there now she was quite good she was actually quite good she'd done the job very nicely and, 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 and gent, shall we say gently, you know, she, it didn't hurt. There's another guy there who looks, it looks like, <laughs> it looks like a bloke trying to hide the fact that he's gay, but I can tell he's gay, you know, because he's got plucked eyebrows and all this old rubbish, and he? You know, and when I went, as soon as he looked at me, I thought, he doesn't like me for some reason. I, I just, do you know you get that feeling sometimes? I thought, he doesn't like me, and I looked at him and I thought, I don't like you either. Anyway, he called me over and started, and he was really rough as well. Ever so rough he was. You know, very rough. So I'm not going back to him. Don't think I'll go back to that one there. It's funny, isn't it? How, how it matters about your hairdresser. So it's like, the, the, the one who did it last time, who was rough and made it all sore on the top of my head, she wasn't nasty or unpleasant. I didn't dislike her at all. In fact, I quite, I really got on with her, and I liked her. But the haircut was blooming well rough. <laughs> and she, I don't think she did that. Um, you know where they get the razor blade, and they do that. And I don't, I don't remember her doing that either. Actually, I'm quite glad she didn't. I've noticed every time they do that, they put another blade on. Is that is that a legal thing? Do we have any hairdressers watching in the UK? Are you legally obliged to put a new blade on each time? Because it does seem a bit of a waste of money. I mean, I don't change my, you know, my shaving razor. I've got, I use a, a safety razor. What have I got at the moment? A Gillette, um, oh, I don't, I'd some sort of Gillette one with five blades. And I've spoken on this show before about the fact that razors are extremely expensive. You know, the, the, the replacement blades are very expensive. However, <clears throat> I'm going to backtrack a little bit on that because I do notice those five blade expensive Gillette replacement blades do seem to last a hell of a long time. I have had mine for a month now. now. I don't shave every day. I shave every other day. So actually I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I don't bother Saturday and Sunday, then Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I save, shave three times a day. I don't suppose I change that blade more than once every six weeks. So maybe, maybe I was wrong to say that. Yes, you do pay more for those Gillette ones and the Wilkinson sword ones, you know. I mean, like ten quid for for a uh, for a packet of five, I think, or something like that. I can't remember the exact, exact prices, but they do seem to last a long time. Unlike this, I, I've had Bic ones. You know, the little Bic ones, one blade, little Bic disposable ones, and you do that, woof, you know, cuts all over your face. The cat comes running over and starts licking my face because I think she likes the taste of blood. To be honest. I mean, she is a vampire cat. Oh, you're back again, darling. Oh no, no, she's gone again. What do you want, darling? What? You coming up? Coming up? You coming up? I, th I think she wants a shave as well. Is that what you want? Do you want a shave? Do you want a shave? Coming up, you come then. Oh, I don't know what she's on today. Funny old thing, isn't she? Um, so yes, so no, so that's that's about razors. So I th I think maybe those Gillette and Wilkinson ones. Yes, you do pay more. Actually, a lot more for them than the disabled, uh, not disabled ones, than the disp dispo <laughs> disabled razors. I mean, what would they look like? <laughs> maybe they have a blade missing or something like that. Um, yeah. Oh, what are you doing, woman? What are you doing? Disposable razors, of course. So, yeah, I mean, they're much cheaper, but the Gillette and the Wilkinson ones last a lot longer. Do you find that, chaps? Do let me know on the email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. That's my email address. Uh, I've had a shave today, actually, and, you know, there's no cuts or anything. And that, that blade in there has been in there about six or seven weeks now, to be honest. It has. No, why why change it unnecessarily? You don't have to change it every 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 two weeks, just or every week, whatever, just for the sake of it. Use it until it starts pulling away at those hairs and then replace it. Yes, we can't be wasting things. I keep telling you, don't waste things. My mate goes mad, doesn't he? He he, he just goes mad. Now talking of not wasting things, why mates? So no more go, no more rough haircuts, please. Is there anyone who wants to cut my hair? 
you know, I don't mind you cutting my hair for free and I can put a little little advert for you behind me on the wall for the millions of people that watch this show or listen to it. If that, for, those, for those that listen, I will give your hairdressers a mention every now and again. What about, I don't know if my friend Carl watches, Carl, a um, young lad who lives in uh, Manchester, he became a hairdresser. Um, so I've got a new shirt on today, boys and girls. I've been buying a few more shirts, actually. Now, I cannot believe it, right? But this, uh, first of all, I went to this shop, actually after church, a couple of Sundays ago. <clears throat> and I went in there. I tend not to try things on. I think a lot of men don't bother trying things on in uh, shops and things. Um, so I picked out a load of shirts, large, OK, I like to, oh, I can't get in the medium, I get the large. So I took them all home. Now, bear in mind, a few weeks ago I bought some shirts. Do you remember I got them all out and showed you? OK, they were large, OK, and they fit. Nose is getting itchy again. Marge hates it when I start scratching my nose. I'm sorry, Marge. <coughs> That's better. <coughs> um, and they, they all fitted perfectly. So I went in there, I picked out, I think, three shirts all together. Now, where's my tissue? Oh, dear, don't say I haven't got a tissue. I, sh I might have to go and get a tissue and I have to blow my nose. Um, Marge was saying... Oh, what was she saying? Oh, yes. Marge was saying uh, she doesn't like me my, scratching my nose all the time, so sorry about that. I do apologise, Marge. So I picked up these shirts, three large shirts, thank you very much, paid for them, good price, and a pair of jeans, 40 quid for three shirts and a pair of, um, you know, those khaki jeans. Oh, what are they called now? They've got a name, haven't they? You know, the, you know that not not khaki. They're um, light light beige colour. Oh, what are they called? Oh, it doesn't matter anyway. Will you will you calm down, lady? I don't know what was wrong with this cat today. Um. And so I got them home, and you know when I buy clothes, they tend to sit on a bag on the floor until I'm ready to wear. I pulled one out, doing it, went and put it on, and it was really tight around my stomach. I thought, well, this can't be large. So I had a look at the collar there, and uh, it was large. And I thought, oh, it must be that one. I'll take that one back. Pulled out another one from the bag, exactly the same, tight round the stomach. I thought, well, I kind of put on all that weight, weight already. So then I pulled out one from the cupboard that I'd bought a couple of weeks before from Sports Direct. Fitted perfectly. So I had to take them all back. And the embarrassment, the embarrassment, dear, of saying these large shirts are not big enough for me. That is just very embarrassing. I had to go and pick extra large shirts. I did. And I've got one on to... Katie, what do you want? Do you know, I th I've got a feeling she wants some milk. I might have to pop down. I think I'm going to have to pop downstairs and give the cat some milk or something for a while, OK? Um, so I bought some more shirts. So I swapped them all over to extra large. And I'm wearing one of those today, which is a very nice blue shirt. Or oh, As always, on reduced. We don't buy anything at full price. Sale. Sale, boys and girls. Reduced from £16.99 to... Gling! £10. Yes. Sale. Now, what was the place? I think it was blue... The shop was called, Bl oh, is it, or oh, is that the thing? Yeah, there it is. There's the label. One moment, please. Hold the line while I'm trying to connect you. There we are. Blue Ink Premium Apparel. That's, that's the little label. It says on there. And it's uh, extra large. Look, extra large. Extra large me, dear. Christ, I'm not that fat, am I? Dear me, the embarrassment. I've never been embarrassed in my life. Having to purchase extra large shirts. Are you having a laugh? Anyway, so they must be cut very small. And of course, oh, clever clogs. So I just got served by a very lovely Asian woman on Sunday. But I think she was off that day. And I got served by this lad behind the um, counter. I said, I don't understand. I said, I bought, I bought large ones from Sports Direct and they fitted perfectly. And do you know what he said? Oh, they come up really big on me. I thought, you cheeky git. What does he mean by that? Does he mean I'm fat? I'm actually 11 stone 12, what is it? 12 stone 11.8. I seem to be stuck at that level. It doesn't go up if I have crisps and cakes. It doesn't go down if I don't have crisps and cake. 11 stone. So I reckon at 12 stone 11.8. So I reckon that's my, my optimum weight. I'm just guessing that. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look. Now, I've got quite a lot of emails today. 
which I do appreciate you sending. Thank you very much, including a lost one from last week. I must, however, tell you that I have booked something for my big birthday in February. I am going. Uh, he, 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 uh, I have bought the tickets. Now, where, where's that little thing? Let me show you. Let me, you know I'm going to see you, don't you? Do I need to tell you? I tell you what, it would be handy if I could find the blooming thing there. Where's my, where's my invoice? There it is. I am going on a plane to see my hero, Barry Manilow. Yes, for my birthday. On my birthday, boys and girls. On my birthday. And he is playing in New York. New York, New York. La -da -da. New York City rhythm going through my mind. Yes, I'm going to see Barry Manilow in February for my birthday and it's all booked and paid for i managed to get um tickets or uh, and it's at um saint james's theater in new york now where is that <clears throat> where's the address to that i did have it written down somewhere anyway no i can't find is that it there no so saint james's theater new york i'm going on my birthday february the 5th 2000 and 13, a big, big birthday for me. I am going alone, boys and girls. Uh, couldn't find anyone to go. Just, just, uh, please, you know, don't don't sit there and think, oh, that's really sad, he's going on. Your... I'm used to it now. I'm used to going on holiday alone. If I want to go on holiday, I generally end up, you know, uh, 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 on my own because no one else can make it or they can't afford to go. And I'm not paying for someone else to just come on holiday with me. So that's how it is. Uh, I've got good seats, orchestra centre, Row D, four rows from the front, and I'm really pleased about that. Cost me three hundred and eighty dollars. Uh, I'm, I, I think that's a fairly reasonable price for the seat there. So very pleased with that. I'm going actually going to see him on my birthday. I've booked the fl the flight and the hotel. I paid for all that yesterday. I'm actually going to be staying on Times Square, which is right in the centre of everything. So that's fantastic. I'm actually going to be there um, between Saturday. And Thursday, so Saturday, I think it's, hang on, let me see, I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you, when is it, Saturday, so February the, yep, 2nd, which is, was it the 3rd, one minute, actually I've got my paperwork downstairs, unless it's on here, is it, I'll tell you, oh here it is, look, yes, so, 2nd of Feb, so that's Saturday, <clears throat> and I come back on the 7th of Feb, which is Thursday. Now, I didn't actually intend to go for that long, but the plane fares, the, the, the class that I'm going, because you going on a business class, um, the plane fares on those days, going Saturday to Thursday, are half the price as if you was to go Monday to Wednesday. By, by going longer, it's actually cheaper. I think that's all to do with business cast tickets and businessmen would, wouldn't be flying on Saturday. They'd be flying on Monday and then coming back. So, so I think that's, and, and li really the ticket prices are half the price of what they would be if I was flying Monday and Wednesday. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, hotels books. I don't know what the hotel's like. Um, but I think it's a four star. I've, I've really never stayed in a four star hotel before. Serious. I always tend to go travel lodge and places like that. But I thought, you know what? You know, this is a big birthday. Go and splash out a bit. So I have done. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I've already spoken to uh, a very good friend of the show. We haven't heard for months and months. She's very busy with her life now. She doesn't have time to write. But uh, Suko, those of you that know Suko, I will be meeting up with her for a little uh, uh, afternoon while we're there and hopefully taking the camera and uh, the audio sound recording equipment as well and doing a little uh, show in New York with uh, Suka and also hopefully from my room as well and I'll be able to show you some of the sights that I see uh, in New York. All right, so that's all booked. And talking of Barry Manilow, I cannot believe this. Um, I've got another postal address now, boys and girls, um, that I've been given permission to use. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, I, I think I'm going to say, can you do me a can you wait a second? No, no. Oh, hang on. It's gone. No, the sneeze is gone. Isn't that funny where you think you're going to sneeze and you don't? 
Um, I do have another postal address now, boys and girls, and I will I will give that to you. If you ever want to send anything through the post, um, one of the managers of one of the pubs that I work for has kindly agreed that I could send my um, mail uh, kind of to 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 that to the pub and I will pick it up from there. So that's very kind of him because the post office box, the post office here, started charging ridiculous amounts for the post because we used to have a post office box until they doubled the fee in one year. And I wasn't going to pay that, so it's just ridiculous. So I do have a postal address. I'll give it to you in a second in case you want to send anything through the post. Perhaps my first Christmas card for this year. I know lovely Kath in Wales likes to send bits and pieces for the post. Anyway, so I open this little, little package... And it's from uh, a very good friend of the show, Jennifer, who I've known her from a while. I know she's always still there, so hello, Jennifer. And she writes, Hi, Chris. I know this dude is your favourite. I found these tossed away in a bin of books I was visiting for sale, and I thought of you immediately. I would have framed them in a shiny black frame with glass, but that would have been way too expensive uh, to ship and probably break. Uh, you're quite right, uh, Jennifer. Indeed, I had some uh, pictures that someone bought me while I was on uh, Norfolk Island a couple of years ago in the South Pacific. And they were shipped in a post and she'd had them framed. Uh, and packed very, very well in bubble wrap. But guess what? The glass was all broken. So you're, you're right not to. Please don't send any glass in the post. Because, I mean, I'm sure they're very careful. But actually, you know, you've only got to drop something once. And that's it. Smash to pieces. Uh, it's a dreadful waste of money. She says, um, if you like to frame them, I'll let you choose how it's done. Hope you're well. Loving your back with your talk show, your friend in Florida. And this is from Jennifer. And she has sent me... Some Barry Manilow singles. Um, I made it through the rain. And I had a little quick look at these singles. I do believe they've never, ever been played. Um, you know, you, you can tell by looking at a record, there are no marks on that at all. Uh, no finger marks. No, I don't see a needle mark on there or, or anything. So one record is I made it through the rain. OK, and she sent another one, uh, Barry again, ready to take a chance again. Oh, I'm ready to take a chance again, ready to put my love on the line with you. Oh, I love it. Don't start me off. And on the back, uh, it's got B-sides, because, of course, years ago, you know, records, you'd have an A-side, which was the main track, and you'd have a B-side as well. And the B-sides of this are only in Chicago, on the B-side of I Made It Through the Rain, and on the B-side of uh, Ready to Take a Chance Again is Sweet Life. And I don't know those two tracks, so I'm going to look those up on the internet and probably download the MP3s. But um, thank you so much for those, Jennifer. That's a lovely, lovely thought. And I think I might. Uh, what I might do is get my mate Ronnie to frame, because he's good at all that sort of, he's good at all the artistic feminine side of things, you know. <laughs> yeah, I fix things, he decorates them. Do you know what I mean? He's quite good at that sort of thing. So I might get him to actually frame these. What a shame I haven't got an autograph of Barry Manilow to go with it as well, though. Isn't it, eh? Because that would look nicely just underneath there. So thank you very, very much for that, Jennifer in Florida. Uh, I do really appreciate that. I hope the family's all right, my darlings. OK. All righty. Um... On to some uh, emails, boys and girls. Uh, first of all, Marge. Now, I told you I couldn't... I'd lost an email last week. It's a couple of emails, actually, uh, that I lost last week. Actually, uh, Marge, hang on a minute. I'll, I'll do you in a minute. Do that Do that email in a minute. First of all, uh, an email from Guillermo. Hello, Guillermo, who says, Chris, remind me to never get on your bad side. Yes, because um, Guillermo noticed that I had put a post on Facebook. I'm on Facebook as well. My username on Facebook, if you want to add me on a friend there, is uh, Chris Reardon UK, all right? So facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. And there was um, a girl who came up to me um, while doing a, a karaoke and, and she, wanted, she wanted a song. To, I think, I can't remember what it was now. What was it now? Oh, that was it. That was it. Yes. She wanted she wanted to sing next. 
So at a karaoke night, you know, people are constantly giving you requests and I put them in the order that they came in. And if someone new comes in, I'll try and put them near the top. But if people are already at the top who haven't sung yet, they've got to go underneath. It's only fair. OK, if you ever employ me to do a karaoke night, I am, if you don't mind me saying so, blowing my own trumpet here. I am as 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 fair as as is physically possible. But often people come up and start trying to bribe you. And it happens every single week. People start bribing you with with money and drinks and things so that they can move up the queue. Or they come out with excuses that I've heard a thousand and one times. My bus is about to go. I need to get the last train home. Oh, I'm feeling rather drunk, so I'm going, can I go up the list? I'm afraid, no, it's not fair to everyone else. Get there earlier. You get people walk in 10 minutes before the close and they want to go on. You answer no. Can you? Why, why not? Because we haven't got enough time. Can't you just squeeze me in? How do you squeeze someone in? You know, a song lasts about three or four minutes. There's ten minutes to go. There's three songs waiting. How can I squeeze you in? Well, can't you knock someone else out? No, I can't. And it has to be a no every time. And anyway, so often, young, pretty girls. Uh, oh, this, that was it, that was it, that was it. Um... I'm, 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 I'm not, I like to be, be, think that I'm a friendly sort of person. Whatever venue I'm in, I try to make friends. While, while someone's singing, I might walk around and collect books and bits of paper and pens that people have left on tables. I put them back. And I, and I, I talk to people on the way round. Now, the lads, never a problem. You talk to them, you know, say something, something, whatever, and, and they, they come back to you and that's fine. But some of the girls, some of the girls who are often young and pretty, OK? And I might say something to them, whatever, you know, as, as you're walking around. And then they give you that look as if to say, why are you chatting me up? I don't fancy you. Now, girls, there might be one or two young ladies watching this show who are young I'm sure are very young and very pretty, and they probably know it as well. Ladies, please, just because a man talks to you doesn't mean he fancies you. There's no need to give it that attitude. Not everyone does this, OK? But a fair proportion of, shall we say, the under... The under... The, the age group, I would say... 18 to 28, maybe 30. That's the worst age group. You don't dare talk to them because they give you such attitude because they think you're chatting them up. And I put this on my Facebook wall, you know. Ladies, yes, you are young, you are pretty, but I don't fancy you, so drop the attitude. And anyway, Guillermo wrote, Chris, remember to never get on your bad side. Oh, that stuck-up, pretentious cow you shared breathing space with this past week did not want to clash swords with you. It often makes me wonder what psychological glue holds the vain and shallow people's disgusting existences in places. You see, the trouble is you see them on the telly. You know, there are many, many, pro a lot of these so-called celebrities, but they're not real, so they're Z-list celebrities. You know the sort, people on X Factor, uh, The Only Way is Essex, um, Take Me Out, that sort of thing. They really are full of it. They are full of it. It says, uh, the email carries on, all human beings have the capacity for being genuine and polite introductions. Hello isn't code for, please allow me to undress you with my eyes while whisking your passion to the skies. It was only a social courtesy, not a permission to slip for a kiss and a cuddle. You see, and, and this is the thing, I, you know, it's, it's part of my job. To walk around and say, hello, how are you tonight? Are you singing or whatever? You know, or I might, might, might see something on the table to pass comment on. And the eyes look at you as if you're dirt. Girls, I'm sorry. I don't fancy you. So please 
drop the attitude, not to just to me, to anyone else. I, and I do feel really sorry sometimes for really good looking lads, straight lads, who, and I've seen it so many times, who go up, whether it's a karaoke, a disco, a pub, whatever, who go up, who, 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 who bottle up the courage to go up to girls which are usually sitting in groups and ask one of them hello do you want a drink or something like that and they turn around and laugh in his face and quite frankly i don't know how some of you ever find boyfriends when that's the attitude you take because it's just nasty it really is nasty you don't have to be nasty to them uh, thanks for that, Glermo. And that's the email I lost of his uh, last week. Have you got any experiences like that, lads? Or girls, indeed? Turn it the other way. Have you ever gone... I don't suppose you've ever gone up to chat to a young man or something and been given attitude back. I bet you haven't. But it does work the other way. Let us know your stories. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Hello to Marge, then. Here's the email I couldn't find from her last week. She says, hello, Chris, I have a hooded coat like the jacket you wore in the last video, only it's waterproof. And instead of blue and checks, mine is red and checks. My mum got it for me when it rained and it was cold outside. Oh, we don't. It's just gone cold this week. Actually, the temperature has dropped like a, it dropped like a stone on Thursday afternoon last week. Really suddenly it's got very cold. Um... March says, one year we had some pigs and they were pinned up in a small area till we sold them. They really worked the ground tremendously. And so later on we sold them. We grew a garden in that spot and the garden was amazing because we were talking about gardening the other um, uh, week. The soil was so dark and very loose and things that grew were bigger than expected. I think that pigs really worked up the ground and their excrement <laughs> made it highly fertile. Oh. Dear. What a thing to be starting talking about excellent on this programme. Maybe you'll have someone with pigs you could borrow for a while, I wish. I wouldn't mind having a few pigs going around it. They're very friendly creatures, aren't they, pigs? Do you find? And they're very, very intelligent, you know, pigs. They're not stupid animals. Well, it's very sad to watch some of these films and abattoirs on YouTube. Oh, God. That's why I become a vegetarian. Funny you should mention it. I have a uh, uh, this week actually a couple of days ago. I I pulled up all my old plants in the vegetable section. Uh, lots of runner beans still to be eaten, and to store them, what I've done is put them in a in a bowl of water. Because if you leave them out of the water, they suddenly go all soft, don't they? So I've put them in a bowl of water, and that appears to be a good way of storing them for a few days. So that's what I've done with those um, potatoes. Complete waste of time. Onions, onions were uh, moderately successful. Carrots. I just don't understand. The carrots only grew to about, you know, a couple of inch, no, about an inch, inch and a half. And they were in there months. Don't understand why the carrots haven't grown at all. Um, we were talking about um, women getting their bits and pieces out in newspapers. Marge says, topless is demeaning to the woman. Everyone has their rights to do as they please, but it saddens me to see young girls like you were telling about. It's against my moral beliefs anyway. Yeah, I was talking about, you know, how, how would you feel if you, if you saw your daughter, you know, in a newspaper top off? How would you feel? I wouldn't be happy about that at all. I know it's their life and this, that and the other, but it, it, it's just like self-respect, really, you know. I, I meet people of all walks of life. I meet people that do porn films and they, they, they tell you like it's, it's a normal thing. And I don't think it is. You know, boys and girls. I met you know, boys and girls. Oh, what do you do? Oh, I, oh, I do porn. And I'm like, oh, God, oh right. If and I think to myself, well, fancy telling someone that? Wouldn't you want to keep that quiet? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't tell people. Would you tell people that? Would you? You know, you know proudly. To, I do porn. I'm proud of that. No. I, I you, you kind of think, why? Well, why have you told me that? I don't know. What do you think of that? Do you think everyone should do and be done or, or whatever? Chris, uh, United Kingdom Talk is my email address. On the subject of onions, Marge says, I would grow onions in raised beds with good soft soil. It may be that you have hard ground. Um, 
You can have a point there, actually. The the ground tends to... I, I have, as I say, I've dug up the vegetable pit patch now, and I've with the rake and done that and i have actually put some overwintering onions in but you could have a point now if i raised raise the ground up a little bit and uh and and replace that top soil that might help so there we are on the subject of size size as in cloves because i think we were mentioning my clove sizes uh, the other week uh, march says chris i wear size 38s is that jeans okay uh, my jeans are 38 now. What, are they 30? No, they're 36. My jeans is a 36 now. I used to be 32. Actually, you know, 32 to 36, it's only four bloody inches, isn't it? I mean, it's not an awful lot, is it? Four inches to go up in size? <laughs> Chris, I wear size 38. I used to be 32 about two years ago. And I started wearing stretch jeans. That's when I started gaining weight. What, when you started wearing the stretch jeans? <laughs> and the trouble is you don't notice yourself putting on weight then, do you? Because they're stretching with you. She says, I don't do that now. I keep in my pants. And if they start getting tight, I just loosen down to fit them, fit into them. I just lose, lose the weight down to fit into them. Do you really? Wow. Oh, I'm impressed. I love those jeans you showed with the white symbols on the back pockets. Good. They're having their first wash as we speak. They're in the washing machine you know, with, with lots of other. I always make sure I have a full washing machine. We can't be using unnecessary electricity and water in this house. Thank you very much. Halloween. She says, I wish people would dress up here for parties. You rarely hear of anyone who wants to dress up except at Halloween. You guys are more laid back than we dull Americans. Um, yes, because I did that fancy dress party a couple of weeks ago at a lovely house in Harrow in London. And everyone dressed up. Well, it was a fantastic night. In fact, uh, tonight, of course, I'm doing a Halloween party at the Steamcoach in Hemel Hempstead. If you're watching this programme on Saturday, the... What is it? Saturday, the... Uh, and what's the date today? 27th. If you're watching this programme on Saturday the 27th of October 2012 and you're in the Hemel Hempstead area, we're having a little fancy dress party at the Steamcoach tonight in Hemel Hempstead where I'm doing a bit of DJing 8 till 12. Not too much of a late finish. All in fancy dress. Come along. Come along in fancy dress. I don't think there's any charge for tickets either. I do believe it's a free night. Marge says, you discussed good details to the person on being a DJ. Ever considered teaching on the side? Um, I, I like to, I, I, I have, I haven't actually taught, as in taught, but I have helped people do DJing. Yes, I, I have, and, and various other things. Which I take great pleasure out of. So, you know, when some young person comes up, oh, could you show me how to DJ? Um, yes, I can. Quite happy to do that. Not everyone can do it. You might want to be a DJ and you might not be able to do it. I don't think everyone, and I've said this before, I do not believe everyone can be taught anything. You have to have it in you. It's like, I can't draw. I've mentioned that. I cannot draw. You can't teach me to draw. I can't draw. Okay? I'm going to draw you a little picture now. Right? And this is about the best. We'll find a bit of paper now. Okay. This is about the best you'll get out of me. Those of you listening, is a house with four square windows, a triangular roof, and an arched door with a path and a few trees. And that, that is about the best you will ever get out of me. Okay? That is about all I can draw. I cannot draw. And I don't believe, Marge, everyone can DJ. You can have a go. I'm quite happy for you to have a go. But if it's not in you, if you're not musical inside, if you're doing it just to, be, just to make money or, or become famous, it ain't going to happen. You've got to be totally into it. Totally into it. So I haven't considered being a teacher, but I, I think I have taught or helped other people along the way she says or do you have to go to a college and have a degree in order to get work what to, to be a teacher oh i don't know about that what i'm speaking of is like an apprentice like uh, you used to in the old days i don't know about teaching i think i think yeah you have to you have to go on courses and things like that yes 
Marches, I think I've been watching too many of your videos and Facebook posts. Chris, I've had a dream about you. Dreaming about me? Oh dear. Is that wise? <laughs> the dream was I met you in this cowboy dance place bar and grill with the nice cowboys in there. Oh, send shivers up my back. You were talking to this very nice looking young cowboy and I walked up and said, aren't you Chris Reardon? And you smiled. I said, what are you doing in America? You said you'd come to visit a relative here. It was a short dream, but very real. The guy you were talking to was very handsome as well, by the way. Wink, wink. That's the end of the dream. Oh, didn't anything else happen, Marge? I am disappointed. Now, can you remember where this bar was? Can you remember? Because I want to go there and meet that young, handsome cowboy. Yeehaw! I wonder if he's got his lasso. I could be walking down, he could lasso me and drag me back towards him like a tractor beam in Star Trek. Oh, I, I met someone who went to the Star Trek convention in London last week. I haven't got time to tell you, actually. I'm, I'll try and do that on the next show. Let me write that down in case I forget. Star Trek convention. I'll try and do that uh, next week. Convention. Right. Okay, do. Do you live in a small community or a rural area? I live in a rural area. I live out five miles from town, but there are a few houses close by, and one neighbour is a pain in the derriere. He burned some brush yesterday, and the wind got out of the south and covered my, covered my house. What, with smoke? How awful. I was at work and had left over my windows, so when I got home, the house was full of smoke. It's hard to love your neighbours when there are neighbours like that. They could have mentioned the burning and warned me ahead of time, but it seems people are not considerate that way. I bet you are, Chris. I bet you are considerate of other people's feelings. I get that from your videos. But then you don't take anything back, I bet. Correct. Um, I would be horrified if my neighbour knocked on the door and said, can you turn the music down? That would... I would be absolutely horrified. I, I never... I would never... Um, I would never in, uh, purposely turn my music up. Oh, excuse me, hiccups. I would never turn my music up that loud. I, I always think of the neighbours. Absolutely. I would never, ever want to upset people around me. Similarly, if someone said something to me, and it, it does happen, some say something nasty to me, I will come back uh, um, in the same tone. If I get an email, there's, I haven't had one for years actually. If I was there, I used to get a couple, over the years I've had a couple. If I get a nasty email, I will either completely ignore it or um, respond to it privately in the same tone that it was directed at, at me. Absolutely, you're quite right, Marge. She says, OK, enough of a novel. Till next time, look forward to my cell phone answering MP. Oh, I sent you that, didn't I? Um... There we are. And she puts her address as two miles south at Marge at two miles south of the cow on the corner intersection. Just turn right between beside the tall sunflower and over the hill to the camper you see at the bottom. You can't miss it in Oklahoma. <laughs> and that was that was the email that we lost last week that I'm very pleased um, uh, to say that I found again. And um, that's it. Let's have a look there. Is that the same email there? Oh, it's the same one. Oh, must have printed that off twice. I thought, thought I had another one from you here somewhere, Marge. Maybe not. One minute. Because it's uh, it kind of makes sense to do them all at the same time, doesn't it? No. Oh, that must have been it. Was it Marge? Now, am I fully up... Is that yours? Am I fully up to date with your emails now, Marge? I do hope so, darling. Do hope I'm fully up to date with your emails, Marge. So continue sending, please, dear. Um, let's say hello to the lovely James. Hello, James. Who writes? Hello, Chris. So to hear your job in Lewisham has come to an end. Yeah, I was sad about that. That was a, that was a great job. Two eight six bar in Lewisham, unfortunately closed. I saw the report on your Facebook page. Once again, I am on Facebook. My username there, if you want to join me or add me, is Chris Reardon UK. It's a shame as Lewisham is about twenty to thirty minutes away from me. There's been a lot of shops gone from there, like at Beatty's the toy shop. <gasps> Beatty's the toy shop. Oh, James, now you're talking. 
let me tell you, boys and girls, Beatties, B-E-A-T-I-E-S, is like it's like a model town, uh, model toy shop. So they've got electric train sets, which are my favourite. They've got scale electrics, um, little remote control, got a fantastic shop. I used to go in there loads with my dad in the one in Kingston. And we'd have a look at all my all the electric train because I have got an I have actually got an electric train set in a box. It's an Intercity one two five. I'll set it up one day and I'll show you my Intercity one two five. I don't have a layout or anything like that. I always thought when I was a little boy, you know, when I get a nice house, I'll convert one of the rooms to have an electric train set layout. But it never really happened. I don't think I'd have the patience to put it together. You know, I'd want someone to come around, pay them to set it all up and get with all the little models and things like that and little lights. And then I could just go in there and turn it on and off. You know, I, I don't think I'd take much pleasure out of building it myself. I, I do believe there are people that do that. You know, some of these old boys who, who have retired now have got the most amazing electric train sets. Either in their loft or in a spare room, or even in the garden, they have garden. They have garden electric train sets. Did you know that? Oh yes, people have converted enormous areas of their garden just for a train set. It's wonderful, dear, wonderful. So I know Beatties. I love that shop, Beatties. Anyway, it goes on. Uh, shops have gone like that. Like Beatties, the toy shop, and a massive market there too has gone. But it's becoming like other Thai streets, which now would make me sad. As for where children are concerned, it's a sad place with them now, as you would see them play in the street. But not so much now because of traffic. Well, traffic is horrendous in some parts of London. Traffic is one, and people being frightened off about reports of um, uh, paedophiles. It's, I don't know about this whole paedophile thing. I mean, weren't they always there, but just never reported, I wonder? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they, they must have always been there. Or, or has the tr society changed that there are a lot more of them? You know, I mean, I must admit, um, was it last night or today? Oh, it was today. Today. Coming back from the swimming pool today, I saw this little girl uh, walking along on her own. And I thought, where's her mother? You know, I thought to myself, someone could harm her. Now, why would I think that? Do you know what I mean? I don't think you used to think that years ago. You'd see little children playing out there. You wouldn't automatically assume that someone was going to suddenly stop a car, open the door, drag them in and drive off with them, would you? you? You just wouldn't think. But you do think that now. I think it's very sad the way society has changed like that. But Peter Vos, I, I, I would assume there were just as many um, when I was a child, but you didn't hear about them maybe. I don't know. Um, James goes on to say, it's sad that the little girl went missing in Wales and never found, they still haven't found that girl, have they? I can't remember her name now. And wasn't the bloke charged with her kidnap known to the girl, which makes it worse? Yeah, he was, her, he was her uncle, wasn't he? I think the girl had cerebral palsy and he was her uncle. We haven't heard much about that story, actually. I must, must look up that. I can't remember it now. I can understand. It wasn't, how long ago was that? It's been a few weeks ago now, isn't it? We haven't heard a thing about that. I can understand people being frightened when seeing things like this on the news. I like the demonstration you and Ron did. Is there any difference uh, software-wise in the iPhones? And that's from James. No, I don't think there is. Um... The one thing I know about the iPhone 5, which I still haven't got my one yet, um, it's not come yet, is that you can do, you know, FaceTime. Those of you who've got the iPhones will know what FaceTime is. Well, on the iPhone 5, you can do FaceTime over 3G, which you can't do, uh, or 4G, because we've got 4G just uh, starting here in the UK. Uh, on the new iPhone, you can do uh, you can do FaceTime over 3G and 4G, I believe. But you can on, on the iPhone 4, you can only do it on um, wireless internet. You know, wireless in the house. So thank you for that one. Hello to Stella. Hello, Stella, darling. How are you? And Stella says, I'm disappointed. After all the advice I gave you concerning the iPhone 5, you've chosen to ignore and decided to buy one. Tut, tut, they're rubbish. Trust me. You'll be wasting your time, money, and no doubt be back on Facebook requesting my help. Stick to the iPhone 4S. Far more stable device. And for many reasons, this iPhone is just a big consumer con. Well, that's all wrong. You're completely wrong there, Stella. Number one, the iPhone 5 is a free upgrade. 
hasn't cost me a penny. All right, dear? So there you are. Hasn't cost me nothing. Not a penny. Free upgrade to Chris Reardon. Also, I don't have an iPhone 4S. I have an iPhone 4. So it's a bit slower. And my mate's got iPhone 4S, and it does do more things than mine do. So there we are. Um... Uh, as for a big consumer con, yeah, you're probably right. It does does do a few different extra things, but no, I didn't pay for it at all. On your comments regarding parents, I believe you've got to earn the right to be a parent. My mother didn't, which is why I never respected her. This this email is coming from Stella. There have been times that I strongly believe I was only a trophy baby. As I got older, I was just in the way of my mother's career. And so I was farmed out to grandparents, stepmum, uncle, and told to be so proud my mum was fighting for her queen and country. Ever since I was ten years old, I've always believed she should have been at home looking after her child. There are many more reasons I won't go into. From the age of fifteen till I was thirty-two, I never spoke to her again. Till one night, she called me on the telephone from a hospital and told me she understood why I was so angry, that I had every right to be, that she was sorry and she wished things were different. I was still angry. I put the phone down. The next day, I was fuming and realised she must have had my phone number all this time and never tried to call me before. So I called the hospital to speak to her, only to be told she had died the night before, holding a telephone. So you see, that's why I said parents need to earn the rights of parenthood. Any person can become a mother or a father. That, that's, that's just so sad. You know, that that she died holding that, that phone. You know she was on the phone to you, don't you? Mm. Thanks for sharing that, Stella. Stella goes on to say, On a much lighter note, Christmas presents for babies, you are asking. As you know, Chris, my niece is also six months old now. We already buy her clothes and teddy bears. Oh, you can't be a teddy bear. In fact, I might buy myself one because there's no one for me to cuddle in bed, Stella. You're all right, girl, ain't you? Ain't no one for... No one's been in my bed for years now. Must be about three or four years now since someone shared my bed. Only the cat now and again. You know, only the cat. And she dribbles. Cyan. <laughs> uh, is it Cyan or Sean? S-I-A-N. Is that Cyan? Is that Sean? Cyan? Cyan? Sean? Sorry, I might have the spelling wrong of that. Oh, the... the, 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 the um, the pronunciation wrong of that. Sure, I'll, I'll call it Cyan. Has so much already. That's uh, that's her niece, and, she, and she'll grow out of it. Uh, grow out a lot of it very soon, as babies grow very fast. I've been thinking of either contributing to a fund that the family set up for when they when she's older, or buying her something really special like a chain bangle or locket. As it's going to be her first Christmas, there's no point buying more Teddy's dolls as she wouldn't understand the meaning of Christmas, really. However, I may just give her some money. Save the special present for Sean's Cyan's birthday. I think that makes more sense. And that's from uh, Stella. Thank you, Stella. Lovely email. A very uh, honest and um, uh, uh, special email, that one. Thank you uh, for sharing that, my darling. OK, now... Um, let's have a look. Hello to Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan. And I think we're going to have to finish up on this one. I did have another email here, but I'll save that for uh, next week, OK? I had an email from Jeffrey, which concerns a bit of filming, boys and girls. Oh, it's very exciting, but I'll read that to you next week, OK? Our final email today comes from Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan, who says, Hi, Chris. Um, just want to say thank you very much for the show. I often listen to your show and find it makes boring chores go quicker. Hence, just a moment, the phone's ringing now. Hello. Hello, dear. I'm just recording my global radio phenomenon television broadcast of the world. It's my best friend, Ron. Sorry, I will be finished in about two minutes. 
Thank you. Righto, were you required dinner? I can put a couple of sausage plats in in the um in the oven. They're very nice. You'll have dinner with me. Hallelujah. Ah! Would you like some of my special mash with lumps? Oh. Runner beans and sausage plats. Okay, I'll put them in the oven and that will be about from this time five past two. The hand, you're known as the hand. Oh yeah, because you don't you don't appear on the show anymore. Katie's been a bit mad today. Meow, meow, meow. All throughout the show, she keeps coming in and meowing. I don't know what's wrong with her. Anyway, thank you. See you shortly. Oh, hang on. Was this something? Did you buy those peanuts for me? Oh, don't worry. Don't want to go into that shop again. No, no, we're not going. No, I think I might ban myself from Sainsbury's as well. We're Waitrose people now, dear. Waitrose people. And why is my nose... My nose keeps getting itchy. Anyway, I must finish this off. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, he's coming round for dinner, bless his heart. <laughs> that only means his boyfriend's not at home. You just don't come round here. He don't come round here when his boyfriend's at home. They spend the entire day sleeping in bed. A pair of them. Shocking way to carry on. It really is. Anyway, uh, Jonathan writes, uh, where did we get to? I'll start this again. I just want to say thank you so much for your show. I often listen to your show and find it makes boring chores go quicker. Oh, I don't do boring chores. I just get dirtier and dirtier in my house. Do you know, I don't mind hoovering. I quite like hoovering. You know, when you say perhaps a bit of cat fleur, like when, I, when I've been picking scabs off the cat and I put them on the floor, then I get the hoover out quite quickly and uh, hoover them up. I do like a bit of hoovering. I don't, I hate Ironing, hate ironing, uh, and cleaning, hate all that. I have someone come in and do a bit of cleaning. He says, um, uh, hence I often listen to your show while doing the washing up. Yeah, I do a bit. I, washing up's all right. That's cool. You might be interested to know, I discovered your show via my TV. Oh, I was searching through the apps on my LG TV and found your show that way. What do you mean apps? I've got an LG TV. But does it have to be a special one? That I don't think I've got apps on it. In fact, I'm sure I haven't got apps on it. I've got LG TV in the kitchen and bedroom, flat screen one. And I've got a Panasonic one in the living room. But it hasn't got apps. Oh, you must have. Is it a new TV? Is it one of those smart TVs that you plug into the internet? Am I being watched on a large screen somewhere? Is that wise? That must be a very frightening experience for you, John. I hope to visit the pub, the name I've forgotten now, for your pub quiz soon. I hope Katie as well. And it's great to have you back on the Internet Airwaves. And that's from John. Thank you, John. Um, yes, uh, the quiz show, I, quiz I do each week, if you want to join me for that. If you're ever in South East London, I, I host a quiz night on Tuesday night at the Mayflower pub. It's a beautiful little, very, very old pub. And it's right on the Thames in Rotherhithe Street in Rotherhithe, South East London. Now, that's Tuesday nights. I suggest you get there at 8 o'clock. Quiz starts at 8.30. It gets busy, OK? Don't walk in at 28 minutes past 8 and think you're going to find a seat because they'll all be gone. The tables, people, it's got to the stage now where people are actually ringing ahead now um, to reserve tables, which they don't mind doing. But they do ask you to, to arrive within 10 minutes of your table booking. Otherwise, it's just so busy that we have to let it go to someone else. OK. So do come along to that and make sure you announce yourself. Hello, I'm Jonathan. I sent you an email and I can make you special. I can't give you any answers. We're not having any cheating at my quiz. Thank you very much. But it's a very, very relaxed uh, evening. I try and make it as fun as possible. OK, four rounds spread over about two and a quarter hours. And it's at the Mayflower uh, Tuesday nights, eight till 11 in Rother High Street. And talking... Talking of my quiz, I got an email here, which I'm going to read you out on the next show because we're, we're we're over an hour long now, aren't we, uh, on the show? And it might, it's going to be too much for you to have that because it's quite a long email as well. Um, I've got an email from Jeffrey, who's in California. I think it was California. One moment. One moment, please. Jeffrey. Uh, yep, yeah, he's in San Rafael, Rafael, California, and he is the quiz master at 
guess where? The Mayflower in San Rafael. And he's wrote to me with a very, very interesting letter and something that he wants to do uh, next year with with um, with the Mayflower here in uh, London, in Rotherhive. And I'll read you out his email on the next show. OK, boys and girls. Um, as Oh, I didn't have time to show you the little photos of my um, uh, niece and nephew. I'll, I'll, I'll try and remember that on the next show. That's it from the show today. Thanks so much for watching or listening. Don't forget, you can join me on YouTube if you want to watch as well as listen to the show. My YouTube username is Chris Reardon UK. Chris Reardon UK. On Facebook, it's the same. Chris Reardon UK. Facebook username, Chris Reardon UK. The main website for this show you can find at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk you can choose to either watch or listen to the show on there once again united kingdom talk dot co dot uk on itunes subscribe to the show either the video or the audio only version on itunes chris uh, just type in the itunes search for podcasts United Kingdom Talk, you'll find them both come up there. And finally, the email to the show, if you want to write at any time about anything I've spoken to, or indeed anything else at all. Maybe you're in New York. Ah, uh, Is there anyone else in New York that watches or listens to the show? Do let us know. Uh, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Happy Halloween! I'll see you next Saturday. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>